Flight maneuvering load acceleration limits. Clean configuration. Minus 1 gravity to plus 2.5 gravities. Other configurations. Zero gravity to plus 2 gravities. Airport operations and wind limitations. Runway slope. Plus or minus 2%. Runway altitude, 9,200 feet. Nominal runway width. 45 meters. Minimal runway width. 30 meters. Wind for takeoff and landing. Maximum demonstrated crosswind, takeoff and landing, 38 knots gust included. Note, the maximum demonstrated crosswind value is not an airplane flight manual limitation, it is the maximum crosswind condition experienced during the aircraft certification campaign. Airbus recommends that operators should not intentionally operate in crosswinds that exceed this value. Tailwind takeoff. Maximum tailwind for takeoff, 15 knots. Tailwind landing. Maximum tailwind for landing, 15 knots. Note for maximum tailwind for automatic landing and rollout, refer to LIN AFS 20 maximum wind conditions for ILS slash MLS, if installed, CAT 2 or CAT 3 and for GLS, if installed, CAT 1. Note, for landing with a tailwind greater than 10 knots, flaps full is recommended. The following are the wind limitations for passenger and cargo doors operation. The maximum wind for passenger door operation is 65 knots. The maximum wind for forward and aft cargo door operation is 40 knots, or 50 knots, if the aircraft nose is into the wind, or if the forward and aft cargo doors are on the leeward side. The forward and aft cargo doors must be closed before the wind speed exceeds 65 knots. Maximum recommended crosswind on wet and contaminated runways. Runway surface conditions. Runway state and runway contaminant. Damp wet. Up to 3 mm 1 8 inches of water. Slush. Up to 3 mm 1 8 inches. Dry snow. Up to 3 mm 1 8 inches. Wet snow. Up to 3 mm 1 8 inches. Frost. Estimated surface friction or pilot report of braking action. Good. Maximum crosswind for takeoff, gust included 38 knots. Maximum crosswind for landing, gust included 38 knots. Runway state and runway contaminant. Compacted snow. Outside temperature at or below minus 15 degrees Celsius. Estimated surface friction or pilot report of braking action. Good to medium. Maximum crosswind for takeoff, gust included 29 knots. Maximum crosswind for landing, gust included. 29 knots. Runway state and runway contaminant. Dry snow. More than 3 mm 1 8 inches, up to 100 mm 4 inches. Wet snow. More than 3 mm 1 8 inches, up to 30 mm 6 5 inches. Compacted snow. Outside temperature above minus 15 degrees Celsius. Dry snow over compacted snow. Wet snow over compacted snow. Slippery wet. Estimated surface friction or pilot report of braking action. Medium. Maximum crosswind for takeoff, gust included 25 knots. Maximum crosswind for landing, gust included. 25 knots. Runway state and runway contaminant. Water. More than 3 mm 1 8 inches, up to 13 mm half inches. Slush. More than 3 mm 1 8 inches, up to 13 mm half inches. Estimated surface friction or pilot report of braking action. Medium to poor. Maximum crosswind for takeoff, gust included 20 knots. Maximum crosswind for landing, gust included 20 knots. Runway state and runway contaminant. Ice, cold and dry. Estimated surface friction or pilot report of braking action. Poor. Maximum crosswind for takeoff, gust included 15 knots. Maximum crosswind for landing, gust included. 15 knots. Cockpit window open maximum speed. Maximum speed, 200 knots. Maximum flap slash slat speeds. Flaps lever. Position. Zero. 
Configuration on slat slash flap display. None. Max speed. VMO, MMO. Flight phase. Cruise. Flaps lever. Position. Flap 1. Configuration on slat slash flap display. 1. Max speed. 230 knots. Flight phase. Holding. Flaps lever. Position. Flap 1 plus F. Configuration on slat slash flap display. 1 plus F. Max speed. 215 knots. Flight phase. Takeoff. Flaps lever. Position. Flap 2. Configuration on slat slash flap display. 2. Max speed. 200 knots. Flight phase. Take off and approach. Flaps lever. Position. Flap 3. Configuration on slat slash flap display. 3. Max speed. 185 knots. Flight phase. Take off, approach and landing. Flaps lever. Position. Flap full. Configuration on slat slash flap display. Full. Max speed. 177 knots. Flight phase. Landing. Maximum operating speed VMO, MMO VMO. 350 knots. MMO. Mach 0.82. Maximum speeds with the landing gear extended. Maximum speed with the landing gear extended VLE. 280 knots slash Mach 0.67. Maximum speed at which the landing gear may be extended. VLO extension. 250 knots slash Mach 0.60. Maximum speed at which the landing gear may be retracted. VLO retraction. 220 knots slash Mach 0.54. Maximum tire speed. Maximum ground speed. 195 knots. Minimum control speeds. Minimum control speed for landing. VMCL VMCL. 109 knots. Minimum control speeds in the air, VMCA, and on the ground, VMCG altitude in feet. 0 feet. VMCA, knots indicated airspeed, 112 knots. VMCG, knots indicated airspeed configuration 1 plus F 112 knots. Configuration 2 110 knots. Configuration 3 109 knots. Minimum control speeds on narrow runways. For runways with a width below 40 meters, the VMCG must be increased by the values indicated in the following table. Runway width 30 meters VMCG knots plus 2.5. Runway width 35 meters VMCG knots plus 1.5. Runway width 40 meters VMCG knots plus 0. Taxi speed. When the takeoff weight is higher than 76,000 kg, 167,550 pounds. Caution do not exceed a taxi speed of 20 knots during a turn. Wipers maximum operating speed. Maximum speed, 230 knots. Note. This limitation is applicable when the wipers are sweeping. It is not applicable if the wipers are not sweeping for any reasons. Weight limitations. Maximum taxi weight. 77,400 kg. Maximum takeoff weight, brake release, 77,000 kg. Maximum landing weight. 64,500 kg. Maximum zero fuel weight, 61,000 kg. Minimum weight, 37,230 kg. In exceptional cases, in flight turn back or diversion, an immediate landing at weight above maximum landing weight is permitted, provided the pilot follows the overweight landing procedure. General. With passengers on board, it is not recommended to exceed 20 minutes without air conditioning supply. The lack of fresh air supply will significantly reduce the cabin's air quality. APU bleed use with HP Air Start Unit. 
the flight crew must not use bleed air from the APU bleed and from the HP air start unit at the same time, to prevent any adverse effect on the bleed air system. Avionics Ventilation During ground operations and depending on the outside air temperature, OAT, the flight crew must limit the time that the aircraft electric power supply is used, in normal avionics ventilation system configuration, as follows. Outside air temperature less than or equal to 49 degrees Celsius no limitation. 49 degrees Celsius less than outside air temperature less than or equal to 55 degrees Celsius 2 hours. 55 degrees Celsius less than outside air temperature less than or equal to 60 degrees Celsius 1 hours. 60 degrees Celsius less than outside air temperature less than or equal to 64 degrees Celsius 0.5 hours. Cabin pressure. Maximum positive differential pressure. 9.0 psi. Maximum negative differential pressure. Minus 1.0 psi. Safety relief valve setting. 8.6 psi. Outflow valve closure 15,000 feet. Max cabin altitude selection 14,000 feet. Max operating altitude 39,800 feet. Cabin altitude warning 9,550 feet plus slash 350 feet. Max normal cabin altitude 8,000 feet. Minimum cabin altitude minus 2,000 feet. Note. Maximum differential pressure, delta P, and safety valve setting tolerance equals plus or minus 7 hectopascals, 0.1 psi. Packs used with LP air conditioning unit. The flight crew must not use conditioned air from the packs and from the LP air conditioning unit at the same time, to prevent any adverse effect on the air conditioning system. Autopilot function. The autopilot can be used with the following minimum values. At takeoff, 100 feet AGL and at least 5 seconds after liftoff. In approach with FGS mode. 200 feet AGL. In approach with final app, VS or FPA mode. 250 feet AGL. In circling approach. 500 feet AGL for aircraft category C. 600 feet AGL for aircraft category D. ILS slash MLS approach when CAT 1 is displayed on the FMA 160 feet AGL. GLS approach when auto land is not displayed on the FMA. 160 feet AGL. ILS slash MLS approach when CAT 2 or CAT 3, single or dual, is displayed on the FMA 0 feet AGL if auto land. PAR approach, precision approach radar 250 feet AGL. Note. The use of the autopilot and or flight directors is authorized in PAR approach, with HDGVS or TRKFPA. PAR approaches may be subject to operational approval. After a manual go-around. 100 feet AGL. In all other phases. 500 feet AGL. The autopilot or flight directors in open descent or descent mode can be used in approach. However, its use is only permitted if the FCU selected altitude is set to, or above, the higher of the two, MDA slash MDH or 500 feet AG. Flight management function. FMGS lateral and vertical navigation is certified for. After takeoff, on route, and terminal area operations. Navigation within RNF slash RNP airspace. Instrument approach procedures, except ILS, LOC, LOC BC, LDA, SDF, GLS, MLS and FLS final approaches. Missed approach procedures. The FLS function is certified for RNOV, RNOV, GNSS, GPS, VOR, VOR slash DME, NDB, NDB slash DME instrument approach procedures. Using FMS navigation for lateral and vertical navigation. LOC, ILS, glide slope out, or lock back course instrument approaches, using FMS navigation for vertical navigation, associated with lock or lock back course for lateral navigation. Approval of the FMGS is based on the assumption that the navigation database is validated for intended use. Obstacle clearance and adherence to airspace constraints remains a flight crew responsibility. Fuel, time predictions performance information is provided for advisory purposes only. 
Navigation performance. The navigation accuracy depends on IRS drift, or one of the following. Radio nav aid availability, or elapsed time since last computation of radio nav aid position. RNP accuracy with GPS primary is on route. With autopilot on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 1 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 1 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors off. 1.1 nautical miles. In terminal area. With autopilot on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 0.5 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 0.51 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors off. 0.51 nautical miles. In approach. With autopilot on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 0.3 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors on, in nav, all phases, or in flock, approach phase 0.3 nautical miles. With autopilot off. And flight directors off. 0.3 nautical miles with flock deviation. Not authorized without F lock deviation. Degraded situation. If GPS primary lost is displayed on the ND and MCDU, the navigation accuracy remains sufficient for RNP operations provided that the RNP value is checked or entered on the MCDU and high accuracy is displayed. Use of nav mode. After takeoff, nav mode may be used after takeoff provided that GPS primary is available or the flight crew check the FMGS takeoff updating. In terminal area, nav mode may be used in terminal area provided that GPS primary is available or the appropriate RNP is checked or entered on the MCDU and high accuracy is displayed or FMS navigation is cross-checked with NAVAID raw data. Approach based on radio NAVAIDs. A NAVAID's approach may be performed in NAV, app NAV or final app, with AP or FD engaged, provided that if GPS primary is available, the reference nav aid may be unserviceable, or the airborne radio equipment may be inoperative, or not installed, provided that an operational approval is obtained. If GPS primary is not available, the reference nav aid and the corresponding airborne radio equipment must be serviceable, tuned and monitored during the approach. Note, FLS is the recommended managed lateral and vertical guidance mode for radio nav aids approach. RNAV approach. An RNAV RNP approach may be performed, with GPS primary not available, only if the radio navig coverage supports the RNP value and high accuracy is displayed on the MCDU with the specified RNP, and an operational approval is obtained. An RNAV GNSS approach may be performed provided that GPS primary is available. Refer to guidance modes per approach types. Note. FLS is the recommended managed lateral and vertical guidance mode for RNAV. Approach Use of FLS Approach based on radio NAVADES A NAVADES approach, for example VOR slash DME, may be flown with the FLS provided that FAP capability is displayed on FMA. In this case, the reference NAVADES may be unserviceable, or the airborne radio equipment may be inoperative, or not installed, provided an operational approval is obtained. FAP plus RAW capability is displayed on FMA. In this case, the reference nav aids and the corresponding airborne radio equipment must be serviceable, tuned and monitored during the an ILS, GS out, ILS BC, GS out, lock, LOC B slash C approach may be flown with a lateral lock, lock BC, mode and with the FG slash S mode of FLS function provided that FAP capability is displayed on FMA. In this case, the reference navades used for the vertical path validation must be tuned and checked at final descent point. FAP plus RAW capability is displayed on FMA. 
In this case, the reference nevades used for the vertical path validation must be tuned and checked at final descent point and monitored during the approach. RUNAV GNSS Approach An RUNAV GNSS approach with LINAV minimum may be flown with the FLS provided that the FAP capability is displayed on FMA. An RUNAV GNSS approach with LINAV slash NAV minimum must be flown with the FLS provided that. The FAP capability is displayed on FMA. Note, the RUNAV GNSS approach limitations and procedures must be used to perform an RUNAV approach for which the GNSS is not required. Navigation Database Validation RUNAV GNSS approaches and approaches based on BOR slash NDB. To fly an approach in lateral managed mode or lateral and vertical managed mode, the approach stored in the navigation database must be either produced by an approved supplier compliant with ED76DO200A requirements, or validated and approved by the operator. Note Renov GNSS approaches lateral trajectories are geometrically based on waypoints coordinates. Thus, validating waypoints coordinate ensure no coding error on the approach and correct lateral trajectory. Observe lateral track degree of difference. Between MCDU FPLN page display and charts may come from inconsistency between FMS MAGVAR and charted MAGVAR, which has no effect on lateral trajectory. ILS Category 2 Minimum Decision Height 100 feet At least one autopilot must be engaged in approach mode, and CAT 2 or CAT 3 single or CAT 3. Dual must be displayed on the FMA. For manual landing, AP should be disconnected no later than 80 feet AGL. Special Authorization CAT 2, SA CAT 2 Minimum Decision Height 100 feet at least one autopilot must be engaged in approach mode, and CAT 2 or CAT 3 single or CAT 3. Dual must be displayed on the FMA. With HUD, the flight crew must use the HUD to monitor the approach and perform an automatic landing or a manual landing. If the flight crew performs an automatic approach without automatic landing, the autopilot must be disengaged no later than at 80 feet AGL. Without HUD, the flight crew must perform an automatic landing. Other than standard CAT 2, OTS CAT 2. Minimum decision height. 100 feet. At least one autopilot must be engaged in approach mode, and CAT 2 or CAT 3 single or CAT 3 dual must be displayed on the FMA. With HUD, the flight crew must use the HUD to monitor the approach and perform an automatic landing or a manual landing. If the flight crew performs an automatic approach without automatic landing, the autopilot must be disengaged no later than at 80 feet AGL. Without HUD, the flight crew must perform an automatic landing. ILS Category 3 Fail Passive, Single Minimum Decision Height 50 feet Auto thrust must be used in selected or managed speed. At least one autopilot must be engaged in approach mode, and CAT 3 Single or CAT 3 Dual must be displayed on the FMA. ILS Category 3 Fail Operational, CAT 3 Dual Alert Height 100 feet. Auto Thrust must be used in selected or managed speed. Both autopilots must be engaged in approach mode, and CAT 3 Dual must be displayed on the FMA. CAT 3 with DH Minimum Decision Height 25 feet. CAT 3 without DH Minimum Runway Visual Range 75 meters. Engine out. CAT 2 and CAT 3 fail passive auto land are only approved in configuration full, and if engine out procedures are completed before reaching 1,000 feet in approach. Maximum wind conditions for ILS slash MLS CAT 2 or CAT 3 and for GLS CAT 1. Headwind, 30 knots. Tailwind, 10 knots. Crosswind, 20 knots. Note. Wind limitation is based on the surface wind reported by ATC. If the wind displayed on the ND exceeds the above noted auto land limitations, but the tower reports a surface wind within the limitations, then the autopilot can remain engaged. If the tower reports a surface wind beyond limitations, only CAT 1 automatic approach without auto land can be performed. Automatic landing ILS MLS CAT 2 and CAT 3 Autoland and GLS, 
CAT-1 Autoland are approved in Configuration 3 and Conference Full. Automatic landing is demonstrated, with CAT-2 and CAT-3, ILS-MLS beam and CAT-1 GLS beam. With a glide slope angle between minus 2.5 degrees and minus 3.15 degrees. With an airport elevation at or below 6,500 feet. With aircraft weight below the maximum landing weight. Automatic landing is not allowed below minus 1,000 feet pressure altitude. Automatic rollout performance is approved on dry and wet runways, but performance on contaminated runways was not demonstrated. During automatic rollout with one engine inoperative or one thrust reverser inoperative, the flight crew can use the remaining thrust reverser, provided that the wind does not exceed the maximum wind conditions for automatic rollout. Automatic landing system performance is demonstrated with CAT-2 or CAT-3 ILS, MLS airport installation. However, automatic landing in CAT-1 or better weather conditions is possible on CAT-1 ground installations or on CAT-2-3 ground installations when ILS-MLS sensitive areas are not protected, if the following precautions are taken. The airline check that the ILS-MLS beam quality and the effect of the terrain profile before the runway have no adverse effect on AP-FD guidance. Particularly, the effect of terrain profile within 300 meters before the runway threshold must be evaluated. The flight crew is aware that lock or GS beam fluctuations, independent of the aircraft system, may occur. The PF is prepared to immediately disconnect the autopilot, and to take the appropriate action, should not satisfactory guidance occur at least CAT-2 capability is displayed on the FMA and the flight crew uses CAT-2-3 procedures. Visual references are obtained at an altitude appropriate for the CAT-1 approach. If not, a go-around must be performed. Automatic landing in Johannesburg. Automatic landing is not permitted on Johannesburg 03 right 21 left runways. General. APU start. After three consecutive APU start attempts, the flight crew must wait 60 minutes before a new start attempt. Rotor speed. Maximum end speed. 107%. EGT. Maximum EGT for APU start. Below 25,000 feet, 900 degrees Celsius. Maximum EGT for APU start. Above 25,000 feet, 982 degrees Celsius. Maximum EGT for APU running, with 5 seconds confirmation for shutdown, 682 degrees Celsius. Maximum EGT for APU running, for immediate shutdown, 700 degrees Celsius to 742 degrees Celsius. APU start slash shutdown during refueling slash defueling. During refuel slash defuel procedures, APU starts or shutdown are permitted with the following restrictions, if the APU failed to start or following an automatic APU shutdown, do not start the APU. If a fuel spill occurs, perform a normal APU shutdown. Operational Envelope Note, when a value of the environmental envelope of the aircraft is more limited than the operational envelope of the APU, the value of the environmental envelope of the aircraft must not be exceeded. Refer to LIM AGOPS Environmental Envelope. APU operation a normal restart envelope from minus 2,000 feet to 41,000 feet. Electrical power only from 20,000 feet to 41,000 feet. APU battery restart limit electrical emergency configuration 25,000 feet. Bleed air and electrical power from minus 2,000 feet to 20,000 feet. APU ground operation from minus 2,000 feet to 9,200 feet. APU bleed limitations. Max altitude to assist engine start. 20,000 feet. Max altitude for air conditioning and pressurization. Single pack operation. 20,000 feet. Max altitude for air conditioning and pressurization. Dual pack operation. 15,000 feet. Use of APU bleed air for wing anti-ice is not permitted. Thrust setting slash EGT limits. Operating conditions. Takeoff and go around includes toga, flex, and derate. All engines operative. Time limit 5 minutes. EGT limit 635 degrees Celsius. Operating conditions. Takeoff and go around includes toga, flex, and derate. One engine inoperative. Time limit 10 minutes. 
EGT limit 635 degrees Celsius. Operating conditions. Maximum continuous thrust, MCT. Time limit not limited. EGT limit 610 degrees Celsius. Operating conditions. Starting. On ground or in flight. Time limit none. EGT limit 635 degrees Celsius. Shaft speeds. Maximum N1. 100%. Note. The N1 limit depends on the ambient conditions and on the configuration of the engine air. Bleed. These parameters may limit N1 to a value that is less than the above mentioned N1. Value. Maximum N2. 100%. Oil. Oil temperature. Maximum continuous temperature. 155 degrees Celsius. Maximum transient temperature, 15 minutes, 165 degrees Celsius. Minimum starting temperature, minus 40 degrees Celsius. Minimum temperature before idle is exceeded, minus 10 degrees Celsius. Minimum temperature before takeoff, 50 degrees Celsius. Oil quantity. Minimum oil quantity. Refer to Pro Norsop 04 before walk around ECAM pages. Minimum oil pressure. Minimum oil pressure. 60 psi. Starter. A standard automatic start that includes only one start attempt, is considered one cycle. For ground starts, automatic or manual, a 15 seconds pause is required between successive cycles. A 30 minutes cooling period is required, subsequent to three failed cycles or five minutes of continuous crank. For manual start, observe a 2 minute maximum cycle time. For crank, observe a 5 minutes maximum cycle time. The starter must not be run when N2 is above 10% on ground and 18% in flight. Reverse thrust. Selection of the reverse thrust is prohibited in flight. Backing the aircraft with reverse thrust is not permitted. Maximum reverse should not be used below 70 knots. Idle reverse is permitted down to aircraft stop. Reduced thrust takeoff. Flex takeoff. Takeoff at reduced thrust, so called as flex takeoff, is permitted only if the airplane meets all performance requirements at the takeoff weight, with the operating engines at the thrust available for the flexible temperature, flex. Takeoff at reduced thrust is permitted with any inoperative item affecting the performance only if the associated performance shortfall has been applied to meet the above requirements. Flex takeoff is not permitted on contaminated runways. Flex cannot be higher than max flex, equal to ESA plus 55 degrees Celsius. Lower than the flat temperature, TREF. Lower than the actual OAT. Derated takeoff. Selection of toga thrust is not permitted when a derated takeoff is performed, except when requested in any abnormal or emergency procedures. The use of reduced thrust takeoff, flex takeoff, is not permitted in association with derated takeoff. The use of derated takeoff is permitted regardless of the runway condition, dry, wet, or contaminated. Crosswind operation on ground. This engine is able to start in crosswind up to 35 knots. Flight maneuvering load acceleration limits. Refer to LIM AGF underscore CTL flight maneuvering load acceleration limits. Maximum altitude flaps slash slats extended. Maximum operating altitude with slats and or flaps extended. 20,000 feet. Maximum flap slash slat speeds. Refer to LIM AGSPD maximum flap slash slat speeds. Use of flight controls. Caution. Rapid and large alternating control inputs, especially in combination with large changes in pitch, roll or yaw, for example large side slip angles, may result in structural failures at any speed. Certified fuel. The fuel system is certified with Jet A, Jet A1, Jet B, JP4, JP5, JP8, N degrees 3 Jet, RT, and TS1, in accordance with engine manufacturers and fuel specifications. Fuel temperature. Jet A1 JP8 slash N degrees 3 Jet. Minimum minus 43 degrees Celsius. Maximum 54 degrees Celsius. For Jetta only, 
If TAT reaches minus 34 degrees Celsius, monitor the fuel temperature on the fuel SD page to ensure that it remains above minus 36 degrees Celsius. Note. The various types of fuel can be mixed in all proportions. However, in the case of fuel mixture, the minimum fuel specification values provided in the table above are no longer applicable. Maximum allowed fuel imbalance. The following tables indicate the maximum allowed wing imbalance at takeoff, in flight, and at landing. Fuel imbalance at takeoff. Inner tanks, outer tanks balance tank fuel quantity, heavier tank. Full. Maximum asymmetry. 500 kg, 1102 pounds. Inner tanks, outer tanks balance tank fuel quantity, heavier tank. 3000 kg, 6613 pounds. Maximum asymmetry. 1050 kg, 2314 pounds. Inner tanks, outer tanks balance tank fuel quantity, heavier tank. 1450 kg, 3196 pounds. Maximum asymmetry. 1450 kg, 3196 pounds. The variation is linear between these values. Outer tanks, inner tanks balanced. Maximum asymmetry 370 kg, 815 pounds. Fuel imbalance in flight and at landing. Inner tanks, outer tanks balanced. Tank fuel quantity. Heavier tank. Full. Maximum asymmetry. 1,500 kg, 3,306 pounds. Tank fuel quantity. Heavier tank. 4,300 kg, 9,479 pounds. Maximum asymmetry. 1,600 kg, 3,527 pounds. Tank fuel quantity. Heavier tank. 2,250 kg, 4,960 pounds. Maximum asymmetry. 2,250 kg, 4,960 pounds. The variation is linear between these values, and there is no limitation below 2, 250 kg. 4,960 pounds. Outer tanks. Maximum asymmetry 690 kg, 1,521 pounds. The maximum fuel imbalance in the outer wing fuel tanks, one full slash one empty, is allowed provided that. The fuel quantity of the outer and inner wing fuel tanks of one side is equal to the fuel quantity of the outer and inner wing fuel tanks on the other side, or on the side of the lighter outer tank, the fuel quantity of the inner tank is more than the fuel quantity of the opposite inner tank. The difference between the fuel quantity in the inner tank should not be more than 3,000 kg, 6,613 pounds. Note. In exceptional conditions, i.e. fuel system failure, the above-mentioned values for maximum fuel imbalance may be exceeded without significant effect to the aircraft handling qualities. The aircraft remains fully controllable in all flight phases. Minimum fuel quantity for takeoff. Minimum fuel quantity for takeoff, 1,500 kg, 3,307 pounds. The ECAM alerts that are related to fuel low level in the wing tanks, fuel wing TK low level, etc., must not appear for takeoff. Definition of icing conditions. Icing conditions exist when the OAT, on ground or after takeoff, or the TAT, in flight, is at or below 10 degrees Celsius and visible moisture in any form is present, such as clouds, fog with visibility of one statute mile, 1,600 meters, or less, rain, snow, sleet or ice crystals. Icing conditions also exist when the OAT on the ground and for takeoff is at or below 10 degrees Celsius and operating on ramps, taxiways or runways where surface snow, standing water or slush may be ingested by the engines, or freeze on engines, nacelles or engine sensor probes. Definition of severe ice accretion. Ice accretion is considered severe when the ice accumulation on the airframe reaches approximately 5 mm, 0.2 inches, thick or more. Definition of thin hoarfrost. 
Thin hoarfrost is typically a white crystalline deposit which usually develops uniformly on exposed surfaces on cold and cloudless nights. It is so thin that surface features, lines or markings, can be distinguished beneath it. Rain repellent The flight crew should only use the rain repellent in the case of moderate to heavy rain. Wipers maximum operating speed Wipers maximum operating speed 230 knots Braking system the braking system is not designed to hold the aircraft in a stationary position when a high thrust level is applied on at least one engine. During ground procedures that require a thrust increase with braking, the flight crew must ensure that the aircraft remains stationary, and must be ready to immediately retard the thrust levers to idle. Maximum brake temperature for takeoff, brake fans off, 300 degrees Celsius. Maximum speeds with the landing gear extended. Refer to LIM AGSPD maximum speeds with the landing gear extended. Maximum tire speed. Refer to LIM AGSPD maximum tire speed. Nose wheel steering, NWS. For NWS angle limit, refer to DSC 2030 taxiing. Toberless operation on the nose landing gear, towing and pushback is approved when using the accepted Toberless towing vehicles listed in the Airbus WISE ICO 9.11.0001, with the following information. Maximum nose will steering angle. Plus or minus 85 degree. Taxi with deflated or damaged tires. To vacate the runway or taxi at low speed with tires deflated, not damaged, all of the following limitations apply. If maximum one tire per gear is deflated, Consider three gears, maximum taxi speed during turn. 7 knots. If two tires are deflated on the same main gear, maximum one main gear, maximum taxi speed. 3 knots. For the nose wheel steering, NWS, angle maximum nose wheel steering angle. 30 degrees. In addition, if tire damage is suspected, the flight crew must ask for an aircraft inspection prior to vacate the runway or taxi. If the ground crew suspects that a tire burst may damage the landing gear, maintenance action is due. For more information, refer to FCTM slash PR EPLG taxi with deflated or damaged tires. Inertial reference system, IRS IR ground alignment. Ground alignment of the IRS is possible in latitudes between 82 degrees north and 82 degrees south. Magnetic, MAG, reference. If all Adirus have the same magnetic variation table. In nav mode, the IR will not provide valid magnetic heading and magnetic track angle. North of 73 degrees north, between 90 degrees west and 120 degrees west, magnetic polar region, and north of 82 degrees north, and south of 60 degrees south. Flying at latitudes beyond these limits is prohibited. If one Adiru has a different magnetic variation table. In nav mode, the IR will not provide valid magnetic heading and magnetic track angle. North of 60 degrees north, between 30 degrees west and 160 degrees west, and north of 75 degrees north, and south of 55 degrees south. Flying at latitudes beyond these limits is prohibited. Minimum flight crew oxygen pressure. Minimum bottle pressure to cover. Pre-flight checks. The use of oxygen, when only one flight crew member is in the cockpit. Unusable quantity, to ensure regulator operation with minimum pressure. Normal system leakage. The most demanding case among the following. Protection after loss of cabin pressure, with mask regulator on normal, diluted oxygen. During emergency descent for all flight crew members and observers for 13 minutes. During cruise at FL 100 for two flight crew members for 107 minutes. Protection against smoke with 100% oxygen for all flight crew members and observers during 15 minutes at 8,000 feet cabin altitude. Note. The above times that are based on the use of a sealed mask may be shorter for bearded crew, in terms of performance, pressure, or duration. GPWS slash predictive GPWS. Aircraft navigation must not be based on the use of the terrain display. The terrain display is intended to serve as a situation awareness tool only, and may not provide the accuracy on which to solely base terrain avoidance maneuvering. 
the predictive GPWS functions should be inhibited, terrace push button to off, on the GPWS panel, when the aircraft position is less than 15 nautical miles from the airfield. For operations from slash to runways not incorporated in the predictive GPWS database. For specific approach or departure procedures, which have previously been identified by the operator as potentially causing expected or spurious terrain alerts. Note. The decision to inhibit the predictive GPWS functions must not be based on flight crew. Judgment only. Only aircraft with man-made obstacle function can display obstacles on ND and trigger alerts, based on a dedicated database which includes artificial obstacles worldwide.